Luke chapter 18. We want to begin reading in verse 18. You know, we have these accounts in the Bible. The Bible tells us that it's certain people many times. A certain ruler we're going to read about. It's an actual account of an actual person. Right. Amen. It's not an illustration. It's not a parable. This actually happened. Mm -hmm. There was a real person, just like you and I, right. mm -hmm. who had a question in his mind about eternal life. You know, there's a lot of things people want to deny. People want to uh, say doesn't exist. But I, I think... I believe that really there's not as many people that are atheists as claim to be. Right. All right now. Yeah. Because you put them in the right situation. Mm -hmm. Miraculously, they begin to believe in God. Right. Not calling on God. They either call on God or they curse God. Mm -hmm. How are you going to curse somebody that doesn't exist? Really? If you don't believe in it, why are you cursing him? Mm -hmm. Okay, or they call on him. It's true. Well, this man had a gnawing on, ins on the inside yeah. that was dealing with his heart about there being more than what he had. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so we're going to use this portion of Scripture here, and let's read it to you. You read it with us. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, mm -hmm. what shall I do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Now Jesus did not say that he wasn't good. Right. He asked the man, Why are you calling me good? Maybe we could think about Nicodemus. Yeah. Nicodemus came and called him a good teacher. Right. What are they trying to do? Butter God up? <laughs> Thank God that we can praise God. Amen. And yes. we should. And we can yes. worship God, and we should. Right. But you know, there's more to living for God than praise and worship. Right. God wants us to follow and obey. Amen. Okay. Let's go on down. Okay. Why callest thou me good? There is none good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, yet lackest thou one thing. Go and sell all that thou hast. Hello, God bless you. Welcome. Amen. Go and sell all that thou hast. Okay. Give unto the poor, okay. distribute to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. We're reading out of Luke chapter 18, okay, and we're in about verse 23 now. Okay. We just finished off reading verse 22, now we're in verse 23. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye, through a needle's eye, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, who then can be saved? Okay, well, it's hard for this man to go through. Who can be saved? I like Jesus' answer. Because it gives us all hope. Yes. You know, we don't, we don't have to try to come to God mm -hmm. in our own ability, in our own goodness. None of us are good enough. Right. That's right. In our own righteousness. None of us. And that's what righteousness means. Our own goodness. 
God doesn't expect us to approach him in our own righteousness, our own goodness. Oh, God, look how good I am. You have to accept me. Because every one of us has sinned. Amen. And come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. okay. All of us. All people. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know how God wants us to come to him? He wants us to come to him in faith. And trust in his mercy. Yes. And what he has already done when Jesus died upon the cross to pay the judgment for our sin, mm -hmm. to give us the opportunity to be forgiven. Yes. If we will put our faith in God, look at what Jesus said here. Okay? And he said, Who can be saved? And he said, Things which are impossible with men. It's impossible by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're just people. Okay, are possible with God. Amen. Amen. Okay, we can have eternal life with God. Amen. And with the help of the Lord today, I want to preach a message entitled, He yes. Can Do All Things. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Let's look to Him. We're going to ask His blessing upon this service today. The ministry of his word, everybody that's here. Roman Coulter, sir, will you pray, please? Wonderful Father, come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you again for this time of worship for each one that's here. Father, we ask you to let a fresh unction rest upon Pastor Polk. Speak to hearts, encourage, and uplift, and meet the needs of each and every one. And Lord, touch those that weren't able to be with us this morning. And we'll be careful to give you the thanksgiving and the praise. Amen. 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 We want to welcome our guests. Yes. Amen. We're glad that you're here. Yes. And there's some folks that are not with us today. We have some people that are sick and out of town and got broken cars. You know, life. <laughs> life. <laughs> yes. But we're glad that you're here. We want you to just uh, enjoy this service with us. Mm -hmm. Let God speak to your heart. Okay, we're going to preach from God's word here out of Luke chapter 18. Thank God. God, by the Holy Spirit, can take the word that is spoken, preached, and he can speak to all of us, to our hearts. Yes, he can. Amen. That's what he wants to do, because he cares about each and every one of us. Amen. Now, I don't know what's going on in anyone's life. I, I know a little bit about, you know, some people texted, and I'm out of town, uh, my wife's not feeling good, my car's broken. Okay, I may know those things. <laughs> but I don't know personal things about people, and I don't really need to. God knows. Amen. That's right. And God is able to speak to our hearts. Every one of us, thank God, just like this man here out of Luke chapter 18, you know, I think those of us that are uh, have a tender heart toward God, we think about God, and we think mm -hmm. about our relationship with God. Yeah. As this man, we think about what must I do to inherit eternal life. And you put that another way. I want to go to heaven. Amen. 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 What do I have to do to make sure that I make it to heaven? Right. Well, this man did the right thing. He didn't just have that question in his mind. Mm -hmm. He came somewhere when he could hear the answer to the question that he had. Mm -hmm. He came really to the source himself. He came to Jesus. Right. Yeah. And he asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus began to mention some commandments for the Jewish people, okay, under the law. Now, these things are still right today. We're not saying that, that uh, we don't have to obey commandments from the Bible. We do. You know, there are different things, things that we no longer have to follow. The Bible tells us what they plainly are in the New Testament. Okay, but it's still wrong to lie, and it's still wrong to commit adultery, and things that Jesus told this man. Right. And this man responded to the Lord after, okay, after this man asked the Lord, and the Lord told him, keep these various commandments. Okay, just This man responded to the Lord, I've kept all of these things since the time that I was a youth. Since I've been young, I've obeyed these commandments. And Jesus did not respond to him and say, oh, okay, well, you, were, you obeyed all of these commandments. And, uh, okay, you're good. Okay, you followed these different things that you were commanded to do and you're good. No, 
Jesus told this man, and you got to remember that this man was very wealthy. He told this man, I want you. He didn't say it to everybody. He said, I want you to go sell what you have and give it to the poor. And I want you to come and follow me. Amen. Okay, there's something lacking. Yes, you've kept these commandments and you're, you've been a good moral person. But there's still something missing in your life. Jesus told him to get rid of the thing that was most important in his life. To lay it aside and to come and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can simplify this today. Jesus was telling him what really all of us must do, brother and sister. Okay, We've already talked about having faith in Jesus and what he has done when he died upon the cross to pay for our sin. But you know, God also wants us to follow him yes. and to allow him to be the Lord of our lives. Amen. Yes. Thank God. God does forgive and God does have mercy, brother and sister, and he will forgive anyone. Amen. He can absolutely Amen. wash away our past, give us a new chance at life, but we've got to start following him. We've got to be willing to allow him to be the Lord of our life. Amen. Well, this man, he was quick to answer that he'd kept all the commandments. But when Jesus told him, okay, now God would not tell that to somebody that didn't have a whole lot because they, it maybe didn't mean anything to them. But this man did. God told him to, to do that in his life. Okay, He was unwilling to do it. He was happy when Jesus mentioned commandments. Yes, I've done that. But when Jesus said, I want you to, basically, I want you to put me before anything else in your life, he became sorrowful because he was unwilling to do it. Mm -hmm. He came looking for an answer to his question, and the answer was given to him, and he did not like the answer right. that he received. Right. We have really said to God, it's not going to change it for any one of us. Right. God is willing to forgive. But you and I have to be willing to follow. Amen. We have to be willing, brother and sister, not only to receive the mercy of Almighty God, but to keep ourselves out of that sin and out of that wrong that God has forgiven us of. Amen. We begin to follow Him. Amen. We begin to allow Him to direct our lives. You Amen. understand what we're saying today? Amen. You know, if, if uh, somebody gets caught in a bear trap, ouch. Ooh, that would hurt. Oh. <laughs> and somebody comes along and opens it up and says, take your foot out of there. And don't walk by this fence anymore. There's bear traps along this fence. <laughs> and we go and we, lock, we walk against the fence again <laughs> yeah. and get trapped in another bear trap. It's no one's fault but our own. That's right. right. God forgives us. Yes. And he sets us free from the trap. Amen. Yes, Brother and sister, we need to stay away from it. Amen. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know, Jesus taught us how to pray. He said, pray this way. Oh, we all familiar with this prayer. Mm -hmm. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And what's this next part? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God does not lead us into temptation. God does not lead us into sin. In the book of James, we can read about it. And the Bible teaches us there that when a man or woman sins, they sin, they are drawn away of their own lusts and entice. He said, don't say that when, that when you're tempted, you're tempted of God. God tempts no man, and God cannot be tempted with sin. God's not the one, brother and sister, that leads us back into those traps. We are the ones, brother and sister, if we would make it up in our mind, I'm not going to go back into that sin that God delivered me from, but I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. I'm going to follow him, and he's going to keep me 
He's going to lead me, no, not in the temptation, but he's going to deliver me. me from evil. Yes. Okay? We're speaking about he can do all things. Pastor, nobody can live above, above sin. Oh, yes, you can. Yes. God can't help you. God can't help you. God can't help us. He can do all things. This man was not willing to allow Jesus to be the Lord. Are we willing today? We willing. Okay? He was not willing to give up uh, uh, something and put God first. He went away sorrowful. But we don't have to be that way. Like, I thank God for the last part. I'm glad that that account did not end right there. With that man going away sorrowful. And, our, and with us being left out oh, wow. You know, who can do it? Who can do it? He said, they asked him, who can be saved? Man, we, none of us have any hope. None of us have a chance. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, with man, it's impossible. If we stay by ourselves, if we're not following Jesus, it's impossible. But we're not willing to let go. What God is dealing with our heart about letting go. You know, we may not know all of the Bible and all of that, and I understand that. But I think we know the things in our life that God is dealing with our hearts about letting go. Yes. And we've got sin in our lives, well, my friend, we've got to be willing to let that go and to follow the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And be willing to follow the Lord. By ourselves, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. You know, he gives us the strength to say no. He gives us the ability to resist. That's what he tells us to do. He says, resist the devil. Submit yourself to God. And the devil has to flee. Amen. Amen. You know, we can submit ourselves to God. And we're not fighting these temptations and these battles on our own. We've got Jesus leading us and guiding us, strengthening us by the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Word of God. We sing about it. We're standing on the promises of God. Okay? You know, so many times we allow our emotion, or emotions and our feelings to run us awry. And, so and we let things buffet us that we don't have to allow to buffet us. Right. And we would just stand upon the Word of God. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what I feel like. It doesn't matter what my emotions are telling me. Right. I trust God. I'm going to stand upon the Word of the Lord. Maybe it looks like an impossibility in the natural, but I'm not living my life by myself in the natural. Right. Amen. I'm a person that's got God in my life. And as we've learned in our Bible study, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right. but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Yes. yes. All right. You know, I, get, I catch a lot of flack. People give me a hard time. When's this going to happen? When's that going to happen? When's the other thing going to happen? <laughs> Whatever God gets ready for it to happen. There you go. Right. Stop buffeting me with all the questions. <laughs> to bombard heaven with some prayers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's easy to sit there and watch somebody else do things. Oh, don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Why don't you do something? Amen. Yes. That's right, sir. Huh? Yes. That's right. Pray. Amen. Yes, amen. We love you. God loves you. But yes. you know what, brother and sister? God makes everything that we need available to us. Amen. And it's up to you and I to use it. Yes. You know, God's not some weak God. The, the, the world, uh, they, they want to portray God as being all weak and the devil's all strong and all. You know what it is? People do not put their faith in God and they do not follow him. That's right. Huh? That's all it is. But to those who do. Yes, yes sir. Okay? He is able to do all things in their lives. Amen. My friend, that is the hope that we have of God. We don't have to stay weak. We don't have to stay defeated. Right. We don't have to stay uh, subject and bound by sin and our emotions and our feelings yes. in this natural world. Right. We can be set free. Amen. 
whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. Yes, yes. yes, sir. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay? Amen, Lord. We're here to give you some hope today. Yeah. Our God is stronger than any temptation. Yes, he He's stronger than any sin. He yeah. has the right to forgive you because he died on the cross to pay for your sin. That's and right. if Jesus forgives you, you are forgiven. Amen. And I want to give you an example. I want to finish up with an example from the Bible. There was a man <coughs> that the Bible tells us he was paralyzed. He couldn't even walk. But he wanted to get to Jesus. He didn't let the situations and the circumstances stop him. He got some of his friends to carry him on a stretcher to where the Lord was. Yeah. And when they got to this house and they couldn't get inside because there was a lot of people, they didn't just go home and say, oh, well, God can't help me. No, they had faith. They put some action with their faith. Mm -hmm. They went up on the roof of the house. Yeah. They took the ceiling off, right. the tiles, and lowered that man down right in front of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is standing there teaching, and this man comes down on a, on a stretcher. He's lowered down in front of Jesus, and Jesus looks at the man, and he says, Your sins are forgiven you. Yeah. And when Jesus said that, there were people in that crowd that are, that are like a lot of people in the world. Who can forgive sin? Who can forgive sin but God alone? And Jesus said that you may know that I have power to forgive sin. What's easier for me to say? Huh? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk. They said that you may know that I have power to forgive sin. He told that man, arise Take up that, that stretcher, that bed that you're laying on, and walk. That man stood up, and he began to walk. Yes. Praise yes. God. Amen. Okay, listen. We come to church, and people tell us about God, and we hear how wonderful God is. You know what? We're not just up here talking about it. We have oh, experienced yes. it Amen. in our life. Amen. There was a time in my life, like this man, I tried to follow the different religious commandments that they told me to do, but it never changed me. Right. But thank God one day somebody told me about Jesus. Yes. They not only told me that he died upon the cross, they told me that he died to forgive me and to set me free. Yes. And if I would repent of my sin, he would forgive me. I could follow him and God would change me. Yes. Amen. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. Amen. God changed me. I don't walk the same way anymore. I don't walk to the same places anymore. I'm not walking to the bar room anymore. I'm not walking to the cigarette stand anymore. Amen. Come on now. We're not walking that way anymore. God has changed us. He's put it in our heart to do right, to follow him. He loved us. He gave us a chance yes. when nobody else would. Jesus gave me a chance. He forgave me. He gave me a new life. He not only did it for me, he will do it for you. Amen. Yes, he, will. he can do all things. Don't limit God and put God in a box and say, well, that's the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is the God of the right here and right now. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, amen. Right. Yes, he is. You know, there was a woman. I'm going to give you another story. We're going to finish right here. You said you're going to finish already. Well, here's another one for you. There was a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Yeah. And they brought her to the Lord. They were trying to trick him and make him look bad, make Jesus look bad, and they were trying to get this woman to be punished. Right. And if she deserved it, she was guilty. But you know what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. Jesus in wisdom told all those people that brought her, those of you that are without sin, you throw the first stone at her. Mm -hmm. Jesus just stood there, he wrote on the ground. They all had to walk away. Because they were all guilty too. Amen. And it was just Jesus and that woman standing there. And he said, where are your accusers, woman? She said, no man. There's nobody here to accuse me. He said, I don't accuse you either. Go and sin no more. Thank you, Praise God. He let her go and he told her, yes, he did. you know, 
Sister, you don't have to do that anymore. Amen. Go and sin no more. And I really believe in my heart because that's the way that God worked with me and many others can testify to. God gave me another chance and you know what in my heart? God, I'm not going to blow it. Amen. Oh, I'm thankful for what you did for me. Amen. I deserve to be in hell today and should have been there. But because of God's grace, I'm not. He gave me another chance at life. I want to live this life right. I want to live it for him and I can because I'm not living it alone. I'm living it with him. Amen. And with him, all things are possible. Amen. She's going to come to the keyboard. And we're going to come and pray. We want to invite you to come and pray with us today. As we bow our heads and we close our eyes. Maybe you don't know what to pray. My friend, it's not hard. It's not fancy words. But if we will be sincere in our heart, Jesus wants to forgive you. He truly wants to live in your heart and in your life and to help you to do right. As much as we want to go to heaven, He wants you to go to heaven more. And you can. With him it's possible. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your son Jesus. God, right now, I confess my sin to you. God, I have sinned before you. God, I've been wrong. But I ask you to forgive me. I believe on your son, Jesus. I know he died upon the cross to pay for my sin. To give me another chance. Lord Jesus. God, I open my heart to you right now. I want you to come in. I thank you for forgiving me. Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I will follow you. Help me. Let's come and pray. And she sings today, God bless you as our prayer.